Hello everyone, today I'm going to show a simple demonstration in which we'll set up a new CMT control one and create a basic CODASYS project that will allow us to toggle an output on an IRDM16P. Before we begin, please ensure that you've installed the CODASYS IDE. Although there are many versions of CODASYS available, for optimum compatibility, our support team typically recommends CODASYS version 3.5, Service Patch 10, Patch 3, which you can find at store.codasys.com. Once the IDE is installed, please visit our website, wintechusa.com. Create an account, and then download and install Wintech's CODASYS library. With the appropriate software installed, I'm going to connect an Ethernet cable from my PC to Ethernet 2 of my Control 1. The default IP of our CMT Control 1 is 169.254.0.1, so I'll need to change my PC's IP to communicate on this IP subnet. To do this, I'll open our Control Panel, select Network and Internet, and then click Network and Sharing Center. Within the following menu, I'll click Ethernet, Properties, and then double click Internet Protocol version 4. Let's configure our PC's IP to 169.254.0.2 and our subnet mask to 255.255.0.0. And then click OK to save our settings. Now I'll open my browser and type the IP of my control one within the search bar. And then click enter. This will bring us to the web interface of our CMT control one. To log in to this interface, we'll use the default password. 111111. Here we can configure the various settings of our device by selecting the appropriate tab on the left side. Although within this demonstration, we'll focus on the network and CODASYS tab. Let's configure the IP of this device. I'll set our LAN 2 IP to 192.168.0.1 and configure our subnet mask to 255.255.255.0. I'll also enable CODASYS login which will allow us to log in to CODASYS through LAN 2. LAN 2 is normally reserved for the gateway, while the CODASYS application utilizes LAN 1. Once finished, I'll click Save, and soon I'll receive a prompt stating that our change was successful, and so we'll need to change our PC's IP so that it lies on the 192.168.0 subnet. With that finished, I've reopened my browser, and I'll select the link displayed within our prompt, which will redirect us to the home page of our web interface. I'll log in once more using our default password, 111111. And then select the CODASYS tab, and I'll ensure that our CODASYS status is set to start, and then I'll open our CODASYS IDE. To start a new project, I'll select New Project, and in the following menu, I'll select Standard Project, and then configure our file name and location. Once finished, I'll click OK, And in the following menu within our device drop-down list, I'll select CMT CTRL. And within our PLC program list, I'll select Ladder Logic. And then I'll click OK.
To establish communication with our device, let's double click the device icon in the top left corner. On the right side of our display, you'll notice a drop down list under the depiction of a PLC. To establish communication, I'll type the IP of my gateway device directly within this list. And as long as our PC and control are on the same IP subnet and Codasys login is enabled, the Codasys ID will find our device. And we should see a small green dot appear in the lower right corner of the PLC depiction. Now that we've established communication, let's right click on iBus and select Add Device. And I'll select the IRDM16P and click Add Device. And then we'll close this menu. Before we define our project, I also want to configure the IP address of our Codis' LAN port. To do this, I'm going to right click on device within our device list. And once again, I'll select Add Device. Within this menu, we'll need to add an Ethernet device, which we'll find by selecting Field Buses. And under Ethernet Adapter, we'll select Ethernet and click Add Device. Let's double click on our Ethernet device. And we'll use this to set the IP of Codasys LAN 1. To do this, I'll select the button on the right side of our interface box. And within the following menu, I'll select ETH0 and click OK. We can see that currently this IP is set to the 169.254.0 subnet. So let's select Change Operating System Settings and configure a new IP that is more appropriate for our application. Now let's create a basic program by double clicking PLC program within the application section of our device list. On the right side, we'll select some ladder elements from our toolbox. I'll begin by selecting a contact. And I'll drag this to our work area. And then I'll add a coil. In the entry field above our contact, I'm going to give this variable a name. I'll call this in and then click enter. In the following pop-up, I'll leave the default settings and click OK. Once more, I'll select the entry field above our coil and I'll give this variable a name. Let's call this out. And I'll leave our default settings here as well. Now I'm going to select our IRDM16P and within the module IO mapping tab, I'll expand our outputs and double click the entry box next to bit zero. I'm going to click the small button with three dots to open our input assistant. And here I'll expand our application and our PLC program and select my out variable. With that finished, let's select the online tab at the top and click log in. You'll notice that this button can also be found below our help tab on the top left. And we'll be prompted to create a new application and proceed with download. I'll select yes. And then I'll use the switch on my device to put our PLC into run mode. And I'd like to point out that the four green circles next to device, iBus, IRDM16P, and Ethernet tell us that communication is successful. 
So now I'll select our PLC program window. And we'll set some values within our PLC. To do this, I'll click within our prepared values section next to our end bit until our prepared value is true. And then I'll force this value by selecting the debug tab and I'll click force values. As we can see, our coil is now true and the output light on my IRDM16P is now red. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.